graphical method of solution of a pair of linear equations. Here we will learn the graphical method of solution of a pair of linear equations. We have seen how we can graphically represent a pair of linear equations as two lines. We have also seen that the lines may intersect or may be parallel or may coincide. Can we solve them in each case? And if so, how? We shall try and answer these questions from the geometrical point of view in this section. Here, we have the first situation where the two lines intersect at a unique point. This unique point is common to both the lines. Hence, this point is the solution for the pair of given equations. So, the pair of equations in this case has a unique solution. In the second situation, we have coincident pair of lines. Are there any common points on these lines? From the graph, we observe that every point on the lines is a common point for both the lines. So, each point on the lines is a solution for the pair of equations. So, the pair of equations has infinitely many solutions. See, in the third situation, we have a pair of parallel lines. Since the lines do not intersect at all, this means that the lines have no common points. Therefore, for such a pair of linear equations, there is no solution. A pair of linear equations which has no solution is called an inconsistent pair of linear equations. A pair of linear equations in two variables which has a solution is called a consistent pair of linear equations. A pair of linear equations which are equivalent has infinitely many distinct common solutions. Such a pair is called a dependent pair of linear equations in two variables. A point to be remembered is, dependent pair of linear equations is always consistent. We can now summarize the behavior of lines representing a pair of linear equations in two variables and the existence of solutions as follows. 1. The lines may intersect at a single point. In this case, the pair of equations has a unique solution. Consistent pair of equations. 2. The lines may be parallel. In this case, the equations have no solution. Inconsistent pair of equations. 3. The lines may be coincident. In this case, the equations have infinitely many solutions. Dependent, consistent pair of equations. Let us now write down and compare the values of A1 upon A2, B1 upon B2 and C1 upon C2. Here, A1, B1, C1 and A2, B2, C2 denote the coefficients of equations given in the general form. A1x plus B1y plus C1 is equal to 0. A2x plus B2y plus C2 is equal to 0. When A1 upon A2 is not equal to B1 upon B2, then graphical representation of the equations is a pair of intersecting lines and such a pair of equations has exactly one solution. When A1 upon A2 is equal to B1 upon B2 is equal to C1 upon C2, 
then graphical representation of the equations is a pair of coincident lines. Such a pair of equations has infinitely many solutions. And when a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is not equal to c1 upon c2, then graphical representation of the equations is a pair of parallel lines and such a pair of equations has no solution. Let us now consider an example to illustrate it. Check graphically whether the pair of equations x plus 3y is equal to 6 and 2x minus 3y is equal to 12 is consistent. If so, solve them graphically. Let us draw the graphs of the equations 1 and 2. For this, we find two solutions of each of the equations which are given in table. Plot the points A, 0, 2, B, 6, 0, P, 0, minus 4 and Q, 3, minus 2 on graph paper and join the points to form the lines AB and PQ. We observe that there is a point B, 6, 0 common to both the lines AB and PQ. So the solution of the pair of linear equations is x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 0. That is, the given pair of equations is consistent as the equations have a unique solution. In this module, we will learn substitution method of solving pair of linear equations in two variables. Earlier, we have discussed how to solve a pair of linear equations graphically. Apart from this, there are several other algebraic methods which we shall now discuss. First, we will learn the substitution method. Substitution method is the method of solving a system of equations wherein one of the equations is solved for one variable in terms of the other variables. We shall explain the method of substitution by taking some examples. Solve the following pair of equations by substitution method. 5x plus 3y is equal to 26 and x minus 3y is equal to 4. Let us solve by substitution method. 5x plus 3y is equal to 26 is equation 1 and x minus 3y is equal to 4 is equation 2. By rearranging equation 2, we get x is equal to 3y plus 4. And this is equation 3. Substitute the value of x from equation 3 in equation 1. We get 5 into 3y plus 4 plus 3y is equal to 26. Grouping the like terms, we get 18y plus 20 is equal to 26. Subtracting 20 from both sides, we get 18y is equal to 6. Divide throughout by 18, we get y is equal to 1 upon 3. Substitute the value of y is equal to 1 upon 3 in equation 3. We get x is equal to 3y plus 4 is equal to 3 into 1 upon 3 plus 4. By simplifying, we get x is equal to 5. Therefore, the solution for the system of linear equations is 5, 1 upon 3. To understand the substitution method more clearly, let us consider it stepwise. Step 1. Find the value of one variable, say y, in terms of the other variable, that is x, 
from either equation, whichever is convenient. Step 2. Substitute this value of y in the other equation and reduce it to an equation in one variable, that is, in terms of x, which can be solved. Sometimes, we can get statements with no variable. If this statement is true, you can conclude that the pair of linear equations has infinitely many solutions. If the statement is false, then the pair of linear equations is inconsistent. Step 3. Substitute the value of x or y obtained in step 2 in the equation used in step 1 to obtain the value of the other variable. Elimination method Now we will learn elimination method of solving pair of linear equations in two variables. Elimination method is the process of eliminating one of the variables in a system of equations using addition or subtraction in conjunction with multiplication or division and solving the system of equations. This method is sometimes more convenient than the substitution method. Let us see how elimination method works with an example. Using the elimination method, solve the system of equations. 9x minus 4y is equal to 2000 and 7x minus 3y is equal to 2000. Let us solve these. We have a system of two equations in two variables. 9x minus 4y is equal to 2000. This is equation 1. And 7x minus 3y is equal to 2000. This is equation 2. Multiply equation 1 with 7 and equation 2 with 9. Then, subtracting the resulting equations, we get minus y is equal to minus 4000. By cancelling minus signs, we get y is equal to 4000. Substitute the value of y is equal to 4000 in equation 1. So, 9x minus 4 into 4000 is equal to 2000. This implies 9x is equal to 2000 plus 16,000. Which implies 9x is equal to 18,000. Dividing throughout 9, we get x is equal to 2000. So, the solution of the equation is x equal to 2000 and y equal to 4000. Let us now note down these steps in the elimination method. Step 1. First multiply both the equations by some suitable non-zero constants to make the coefficients of one variable, either x or y, numerically equal. Step 2. Then add or subtract one equation from the other so that one variable gets eliminated. If you get an equation in one variable, go to step 3. If in step 2 we obtain a true statement involving no variable, then the original pair of equations has infinitely many solutions. If in step 2, we obtain a false statement involving no variable, then the original pair of equations has no solution. That is, it is inconsistent. Step 3. Solve the equation in one variable, x or y, so obtained to get its value. Step 4. Substitute this value of x or y in either of the original equations to get the value of the other variable. Cross multiplication method Now, 
we introduce one more algebraic method cross multiplication method to solve a pair of linear equations which for many reasons is a very useful method of solving these equations for any pair of linear equations in two variables of the form a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 this is equation 1 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0 this is equation 2 to obtain the values of x and y we follow the shown steps step 1 multiply equation 1 by b2 and equation 2 by b1 we get b2 into a1x plus b2 into b1y plus b2 into c1 is equal to 0. This is now equation 3. b1 into a2x plus b1 into b2y plus b1 into c2 is equal to 0. This is now equation 4. Step 2. Subtracting equation 4 from 3, we get B2A1 minus B1A2 into X plus B2B1 minus B1B2 into Y plus B2C1 minus B1C2 is equal to 0. We can see B2B1 minus B1B2 into Y becomes 0. That is, B2A1 minus B1A2 into X is equal to B1C2 minus B2C1. So, X is equal to B1C2 minus B2C1 upon B2A1 minus B1A2 provided A1B2 minus A2B1 is not equal to 0. This is equation 5. Now, let us move to step 3. Substituting this value of x in equation 1 or equation 2, we get y is equal to c1a2 minus c2a1 upon b2a1 minus b1a2. This is equation 6. In short, we can say for the pair of linear equations given by equations 1 and 2, when a1 upon a2 is not equal to b1 upon b2, we get a unique solution. When a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is equal to c1 upon c2, there are infinitely many solutions. And when a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is not equal to c1 upon c2, there is no solution. Now we can write the solution given by equations 5 and 6 in the following form. x upon b1c2 minus b2c1 is equal to y upon c1a2 minus c2a1 is equal to 1 upon a1b2 minus a2b1. This is equation 7. In remembering the above result, the following diagram may be helpful to you. The arrows between the two numbers indicate that they are yet to be multiplied and the second product is to be subtracted from the first. For example, B1C2 minus B2C1, C1A2 minus C2A1 and A1B2 minus A2B1. For solving a pair of linear equations by this method, we will follow the following steps. Step 1. Write the given equations in the form of equation 1 and 2. Step 2. Taking the help of the diagram, write equations as given in 7. Step 3. Find x and y provided 
a1 b2 minus a2 b1 is not equal to 0. Step 2 gives us an indication of why this method is called the cross multiplication method. As the coefficients are being multiplied here. Let us take an example for better understanding of the given method. Example, the price of 2 tickets to Nagpur and 3 tickets to Kanpur. The total cost is rupees 46. But if we buy 3 tickets to Nagpur and 5 tickets to Kanpur, the total cost is 74. Find the fares from the bus stand to Nagpur and to Kanpur. Let rupees X be the fare of Nagpur and rupees Y to Kanpur. From the given information we have 2X plus 3Y is equal to 46. That is 2X plus 3Y minus 46 is equal to 0. This is equation 1. 3X plus 5Y is equal to 74. That is 3x plus 5y minus 74 is equal to 0. This is equation 2. To solve the equations by the cross multiplication method, we draw the diagram as given below. Then, x upon 3 into minus 74 minus 5 into minus 46 is equal to y upon minus 46 into 3 minus minus 74 into 2 is equal to 1 upon 2 into 5 minus 3 into 3. Which implies x upon minus 222 plus 230 is equal to y upon minus 138 plus 148 is equal to 1 upon 10 minus 9. Which gives us x upon 8 is equal to y upon 10 is equal to 1 upon 1. This implies x upon 8 is equal to 1 upon 1 and y upon 10 is equal to 1 upon 1. From here we get x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 10. Hence the fare to Nagpur is rupees 8 and the fare to Kanpur is rupees 10. Equations reducible to a pair of linear equations in two variables. In this module, we shall discuss the solution of such pairs of equations which are not linear but can be reduced to linear form by making some suitable substitution. Let us explain this process through some examples. Let us discuss the first type. Solve the pair of equations. 1 upon 2x plus 1 upon 3y is equal to 2 and 1 upon 3x plus 1 upon 2y is equal to 13 upon 6. Let us write the given pair of equations as 1 upon 2 into 1 upon x plus 1 upon 3 into 1 upon y is equal to 2. This is equation 1. 1 upon 3 into 1 upon x plus 1 upon 2 into 1 upon y is equal to 13 upon 6. This is equation 2. These equations are not in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. However, if we substitute 1 upon x equal to p and 1 upon y equal to q in equations 1 and 2, we get 1 upon 2 into p plus 1 upon 3 into q is equal to 2. After taking LCM of denominators, we get 3p plus 2q upon 6 is equal to 2, which implies 3p plus 2q is equal to 12, this is now equation 3. Similarly, the other equation can be written as 1 upon 3 into P plus 1 upon 2 into Q equal to 13 upon 6.
After taking LCM of denominators, we get 2P plus 3Q upon 6 is equal to 13 upon 6. Which implies that the second equation becomes 2P plus 3Q is equal to 13. This is now equation 4. So, we have expressed the equations as a pair of linear equations. Now, we get P is equal to 2, Q is equal to 3 by solving equations 3 and 4. But we know that P is equal to 1 upon X and Q is equal to 1 upon Y. Substituting the values of P and Q and solving, we get 1 upon X is equal to 2. This implies X is equal to 1 upon 2. And 1 upon Y is equal to 3. This implies that Y is equal to 1 upon 3. So the solution of the given system of equations 1 and 2 is 1 upon 2, comma, 1 upon 3. Now let us take type 2. Solve the pair of equations 2 upon under root x plus 3 upon under root y is equal to 2 and 4 upon under root x minus 9 upon under root y is equal to minus 1. Let us write the given pair of equations as 2 into 1 upon under root x plus 3 into 1 upon under root y is equal to 2. This is equation 1. 4 into 1 upon under root x minus 9 into 1 upon under root y is equal to minus 1. This is equation 2. These equations are not in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. However, if we substitute 1 upon under root x equal to p and 1 upon under root y equal to q, in equations 1 and 2, we get 2p plus 3q is equal to 2. This is now equation 3. 4p minus 9q is equal to minus 1. This is now equation 4. So, we have expressed the equations as a pair of linear equations. Now, we get p is equal to 1 upon 2. Q is equal to 1 upon 3 by solving equations 3 and 4. We know that P is equal to 1 upon under root X and Q is equal to 1 upon under root Y. Substituting the values of P and Q and solving, we get 1 upon under root X is equal to 1 upon 2, which implies X is equal to 4. And 1 upon under root y is equal to 1 upon 3, which implies y is equal to 9. So, the solution of the given system of equations 1 and 2 is 4, 9. Now, the turn of type 3. Solve the following pair of equations by reducing them to a pair of linear equations. 10 upon x plus y plus 2 upon x minus y is equal to 4. 15 upon x plus y plus 5 upon x minus y is equal to minus 2. Let us write the given pair of equations as... 10 into 1 upon x plus y plus 2 into 1 upon x minus y is equal to 4. This is equation 1. 15 into 1 upon x plus y minus 5 into 1 upon x minus y is equal to minus 2. This is equation 2. These equations are not in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. However, if we substitute 1 upon x plus y is equal to p 
and 1 upon x minus y is equal to q in equations 1 and 2 we get 10p plus 2q is equal to 4 this is now equation 3 15p minus 5q is equal to minus 2 this is now equation 4 so we have expressed the equations as a pair of linear equations now we get p is equal to 1 upon 5 q is equal to 1 by solving equations 3 and 4 we know that p is equal to 1 upon x plus y and q is equal to 1 upon x minus y substituting the values of p and q and solving we get 1 upon x plus y is equal to 1 upon 5 which implies x plus y is equal to 5 this is now equation 5 and 1 upon x minus y is equal to 1 which implies x minus y is equal to 1 this is now equation 6 adding equations 5 and 6 we get which implies 2x is equal to 6 which implies x is equal to 3 substitute x is equal to 3 in equation 5 3 plus y is equal to 5 this gives y is equal to 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 so the solution of the given system of equations 1 and 2 is 3 comma 2. Simultaneous Linear Equations Let's look at our example. Solve algebraically 2 by x plus 2 by 3y is equal to 1 by 6. 3 by x plus 2 by y is equal to 0. Let us look at the solution. Let 1 by x is equal to u and 1 by y is equal to v. Then, substituting 1 by x and 1 by y in the equations we get. In the first equation we will get 2u plus 2 by 3v is equal to 1 by 6. And doing the same in the second equation, we get 3u plus 2v is equal to 0. Calling this equation as first and this equation as second. From second equation, taking 3u to the other side, we get 2v is equal to minus 3u. Substituting this in first, we get 2u plus in place of 2v we can write minus 3u by 3 is equal to 1 by 6. This implies multiplying both sides with 6 we get 12u minus 6u is equal to 1. This implies 6u is equal to 1. This implies u is equal to 1 by 6. Therefore, we have seen that 2v is equal to minus 3u is equal to putting u is equal to 1 by 6 here minus 3 into 1 by 6 which is equal to minus 1 by 2. This implies v is equal to dividing both sides by 2 is equal to minus 1 by 4. Therefore, x is equal to 1 by u so we'll take the reciprocal of 1 by 6, this is 6 and y is equal to 1 by v taking reciprocal of minus 1 by 4 is equal to minus 4 therefore x is equal to 6 and y is equal to minus 4 let's take the next example solve 1 by 2 into 2x plus 3y plus 12 by 7 into 3x minus 2y is equal to 1 by 2 and the other equation is 7 by 2x plus 3y plus 4 by 3x minus 2y is equal to 2 where 2x plus 3y is not equal to 0 and 3x minus 2y is not equal to 0 
Let's see the solution. Let 1 by 2x plus 3y is equal to a and 1 by 3x minus 2y is equal to b. Substituting in the given equations. So in the first given equation we will substitute. First equation becomes a by 2 plus 12b by 7 is equal to 1 by 2. Multiplying both sides with 14 we will get 7a plus 24b is equal to 7. Call this first. And doing the same for the second given equation we will have 7a plus 4b is equal to 2. Call this second. Here, subtracting equation 2 from equation 1, we will get 7a gets cancelled. 24b minus 4b is 20b is equal to 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. This implies dividing both sides with 20, b is equal to 5 by 20 is equal to 1 by 4. Substituting this b is equal to 1 by 4 in first, we will have 7a plus 24 into 1 by 4 is equal to 7. This implies 7a plus 6 is equal to 7. This implies 7a is equal to 7 minus 6 is equal to 1. This implies a is equal to 1 by 7. Now we've taken a is equal to 1 by 2x plus 3y, putting the value of a here as 1 by 7. So 7 becomes equal to 2x plus 3y. And v we have taken as 1 by 3x minus 2y. And the value of v we have found out to be 1 by 4. So from here, 4 is equal to 3x minus 2y. Therefore, 2x plus 3y is equal to 7, call this equation third, and 3x minus 2y is equal to 4, call this equation fourth. Hmm. Multiplying equation third by 2 and equation fourth by 3, we get. So multiplying equation 3 by 2, we get 4x plus 6y is equal to 14. And equation 4 by 3, we get 9x minus 6y is equal to 12. Now we call these equations as 5 and 6. Adding 5 and 6, we get plus 6y gets cancelled with minus 6y. 9x plus 4x is equal to 13x is equal to 14 plus 12 is 26. Dividing both sides with 13, we get x is equal to 2. Substituting x is equal to 2 in equation 6, we get 9 into 2 minus 6y is equal to 12. This implies minus 6y is equal to taking 18 to the other side, 12 minus 18. This implies minus 6y is equal to minus 6. Dividing both sides with minus 6, we get y is equal to 1. So we have obtained the value of x and y as x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. Let's take the next example. Solve 5 by x plus y minus 2 by x minus y is equal to minus 1. 15 by x plus y plus 7 by x minus y equal to 10. Let's see the solution. The given equations are 5 by x plus y minus 2 by x minus y is equal to minus 1. Call this first. 15 by x plus y plus 7 by x minus y is equal to 10. Call this second. Taking 1 by x plus y equal to q and 1 by x minus y equal to v, the given equation becomes... So putting u and v in the equations, equation first becomes 5u minus 2v is equal to minus 1, count this third. Doing the same for the second equation, we get 15u plus 7v is equal to 10, call this fourth. Now multiply equation 3 by 3, the equation becomes... 
15u minus 6v is equal to minus 3. Call this fifth. And 15u plus 7v is equal to 10. Call this sixth. Subtracting equation 5 from equation 6, we get 15u and 15u gets cancelled. 7v plus 6v is 13v is equal to 10 plus 3 equal to 13. Dividing both sides by 13, we get v is equal to 1. Substituting the value of v is equal to 1 in fifth, we get 15u minus 6 into 1 is equal to minus 3. Taking minus 6 to the other side, this implies 15u is equal to minus 3 plus 6 is equal to 3. This implies dividing both sides by 15, u is equal to 3 by 15 is equal to 1 by 5. Now, we have taken u as 1 by x plus y and we've obtained the value as 1 by 5. So taking reciprocals on both sides, x plus y is equal to 5, call this 7th. Similarly, we've taken v as 1 by x minus y. This we have obtained the value as 1. This implies taking reciprocals on both sides, x minus y is equal to 1, call this 8th. Adding equation 7 and equation 8, we have x plus x is 2x and y cancels with minus y. 5 plus 1 is equal to 6, so we get 2x is equal to 6. Dividing both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 3. Substituting the value of x in equation 7, we get 3 plus pi is equal to 5. This implies y is equal to 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. Hence the solution is x is equal to 3 and y is equal to Third problems involving simultaneous equations. Type 1 numbers. Let's take the next example. Sum of the digits in a two digit number is 10. If 18 is subtracting from the number, the result is the number with the digits reversed. Find the number. Let's solve this question. Let u be the units digit and t be the tens digit. Then the number is 10t plus u. Here in this question, we can form the following equations. It is given in the question that sum of digits is 10. That means t plus u is equal to 10. Also given in the question that if we subtract 18 from the number, that means 10t plus u minus 18, the digits get reversed. So this becomes equal to 10u plus t. 10u plus t means the digits are being reversed. Getting the variables on one side and constants on the other, we get 9t minus 9u is equal to 18. Or, dividing both sides by 9, t minus u is equal to 2. Add first and second, we get. On adding, u and minus u gets cancelled. t plus t is equal to 2t is equal to 10 plus 2 is equal to 12. Dividing both sides by 2, therefore t is equal to 12 by 2 is equal to 6. Substituting this in first, 6 plus u is equal to 10. Therefore, u is equal to 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. Therefore, the number is 10 multiplied by the tens digit plus units digit is equal to 10 into 6 plus 4. That is 60 plus 4 is equal to 64. Let's take the next example. The largest angle of a triangle is twice the sum of the other two. The smallest is one fourth of the largest. Determine all the angles in degrees. Let's see the solution. Let the other two angles be x degree and y degree where x is greater than y. 
the largest angle as given in the question is equal to twice x plus y. Since the sum of the angle of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees, therefore twice of x plus y plus x plus y is equal to 180 degrees. This implies 2x plus 2y plus x plus y is equal to 180 or 3x plus 3y is equal to 180 degrees. Dividing both sides by 3, this implies x plus y is equal to 60. Count this second. Therefore, from first equation, the largest angle is equal to twice the sum of the other two and x plus y is equal to 60 from second. So the largest angle becomes 2 into 60 degrees is equal to 120 degrees. It is also given in the question that the smallest angle is equal to 1 by 4 the largest angle. Therefore, y is equal to 1 by 4 into 120 degrees is equal to 30 degrees. Now putting y is equal to 30 in second, x plus 30 is equal to 60. This implies x is equal to 30. As the angles are 30 degrees, 30 degrees and 120 degrees. Let's take the next example. A boat goes 30 kilometers upstream and 44 kilometers downstream in 10 hours. In 13 hours, it can go 40 kilometers upstream and 55 kilometers downstream. Determine the speed of the stream and that of the boat in still water. Let's see the solution. Let the speed of the boat in still water be x kilometers per hour and the speed of the stream be y kilometers per hour. Then the boat goes x plus y kilometers in one hour downstream and x minus y kilometers in one hour upstream. It is given in the question time taken to go 30 kilometers upstream plus time taken to go 44 kilometers downstream is equal to 10 hours. And we know the formula for time is distance by speed. Therefore, 30 by x minus y plus 44 by x plus y is equal to 10. Similarly, second condition is 40 by x minus y plus 55 by x plus y is equal to 13. Call this equation first and this as equation second. Multiply first by 4 and second by 3 we get. So multiplying 1 by 4 we get. 120 by x minus y plus 176 by x plus y is equal to 40. And multiplying second by 3 we get 120 by x minus y plus 165 by x plus y is equal to 39. Subtracting the equations we can see that 120 by x minus y gets cancelled. And 176 by x plus y minus 165 by x plus y. That becomes 11 by x plus y is equal to 40 minus 39 is equal to 1. Therefore, from here on cross multiplying, we get x plus y is equal to 11. Multiplying first by 5 and second by 4. Multiplying first by 5, we get 150 by x minus y plus 220 by x plus y is equal to 50. And second by 4, we get 160 by x minus y plus 220 by x plus y is equal to 52. On subtracting the equations, 220 by x plus y gets cancelled. And 150 by x minus y minus 160 by x minus y is equal to minus 10 by x minus y is equal to 50 minus 52 is equal to minus 2. From here on cross multiplying we will get x minus y is equal to 5. Call this equation as fourth. Solving 3 and 4 we get x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 3. Hence the speed of the boat is 8 kilometers per hour and that of the stream is 3 kilometers per hour. 
Let's take the next example. A laborer was engaged for 13 days on the condition that he will be paid rupees 2.50 every day he works and will be fined rupees 1 for every day he is absent. He earned rupees 47 in all. Find how many days did he work? Let's see the solution. Suppose the laborer works for X days and is absent for Y days. X plus Y is equal to 30. For working X days, he earns rupees X into 2.50 is equal to rupees 5 by 2X. For being absent for Y days, he is fined rupees Y into 1 that is equal to rupees Y. Therefore, by the question, he is earning total of 47 rupees. This means 5 by 2 x minus y is equal to 47. Call this equation as second. Adding 1 and 2, y and minus y gets cancelled. x plus 5 by 2 x is equal to 30 plus 47. This implies 7 by 2 x is equal to 77. Therefore, x is equal to 77 into 2 by 7 is equal to 22. Hence, the laborer worked for 22 days.